What is up guys and welcome back to Adventure Archaeology. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brandon and today we're out on a local river in search of antique bottles. If you've always wondered how I go out and find these places and how I look for these bottles and know where they concentrate in the creeks, this is the video for you. So be sure you hang in there for the full duration for a lot of tips and tricks that I'm going to share today. Also, if you're not subscribed, be sure that you are because we do adventures like this every single week. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the water. Okay guys, the first thing that you're probably going to notice is how murky this water is. The visibility is terrible and that's because we had a lot of rain. And rain is your friend if you're going to walk a creek or a river looking for bottles. The reason for that is the rain will raise the water level up high enough to cause erosion and also the fast speed of the water will actually churn the bottom of the creek or the river up and expose new bottles week after week, making these creeks a never-ending source of antique bottles and river treasure. All right, let's take a second to talk about erosion, okay? We had a lot of rain, as mentioned, and you can see this bank right here has completely collapsed. So everything goes from here to here has collapsed off, and as it fell, it, expo it exposed a new glass layer. All right, you can see there's glass right here. Here's glass right here, it's old milk glass. And as we follow it, we know that the creek is running this direction. We know the bottles are gonna be washed this way and down this bank. Now right up here, you can see there's even more exposed as I fall down. Looks to be about a, a 20 screw top. And there's another one right here that's exposed. There's another probably 20s or 30 screw top. So not very old. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to walk this bank right down through here and see what else may have washed down and got hung on the side. I'm going to carry this glass out too. I'm not just going to leave it on the bank. I've got my backpack today so I can actually carry stuff out of here. I do see another bottle right up here we're going to take a look at. That is a more modern bottle too. So usually what I do is so my backpack doesn't get heavy. With trash glass like this, I'll pick a spot, I'll lay it all down, and I'll come grab it on the way back out. Now as I turn around, you've got a feeder creek here, so where the water meets from here, where things eroded from here, stuff gets caught, and right away, there's a bottle right there that probably rolled either out of the feeder creek or out of the bank. I can tell that's a hobble skirt, but I don't know how old it is yet. So that is, that's a 1915, so that's an early one. For those of you that don't know, the way that you can tell the age of a hobble skirt is usually right here. It'll either say November 15th, 1915, dang, it's got heel damage, or it'll say 1923. This one's been sitting here for a while. You can tell that it's pretty rusty on the inside. Where are you from? That is just a Birmingham. And sometimes you'll even have a date code down here on the heel of the bottle, which I don't see right away. But 1915 to 1923 is when this bottle was manufactured. So it's within that eight year range, which is pretty neat. Nice 100 plus year old bottle. That's a good way to start today, guys. Let's keep going and see what else we can find. One of the other questions that I get almost weekly is, how do you get permissions to be in the creek where you're at and search for it? Now it's gonna vary state by state with state laws, but here in the state of Alabama, there's something known as the Nav Navigable Creek or River Law, which is pretty much a law that says that if you can put a canoe or a kayak or a boat in the water, it is a navigable stream, and at that point, it becomes a right-of-way. And a lot of times, the property lines actually end right at the creek bank. So that makes the water a, a go zone. You can get in here and take a look around and not have any issues. Also, if you're questioning whether or not the land actually is owned by someone you can use an app that I like to use called land glide so look up land glide it costs about ten dollars a month but they do have a seven day free trial and you can pull up exactly where you're at it'll show you the property lines and who owns it incredibly handy app to have to make sure that you are not trespassing when it comes to creek walking there's nothing really special about it and that's one of the things that makes it so fantastic for people that are new to the hobby you don't have to dig incredibly deep holes or anything like that. 
it's just a nice leisurely walk down the creek there's a piece to a jug right there and that is a good sign they were in a spot with older glass so how do I pick the creek that's that's another question I get how did you choose the creek that you're at why did you choose it well this creek that I'm in right here is actually something that's been passed down for years and years all of the bottle guys in the state have known about this particular spot so uh, this is one that I've heard about now we found several creeks though that have been more productive than this one by doing just a little bit of research you don't have to think real hard about it just find an old town and then get in the creek closest to the town and it's as simple as that get in the creek walk down the creek and look for old glass and that's one of the things like i said that makes this hobby so great is you don't have to have any kind of fancy equipment other than maybe a good pair of waders and that's not always necessary just in the colder weather a lot of times bottles will roll and they'll get caught on rocks or limbs and that's where you want to look also a ton of trash and yes i do pick up trash i'm just not gonna be able to carry every single bit of it that i see today we will probably see 500 tires before today's over with sadly that seemed to be the thing to do 40 or 50 years ago was to roll your worn out tires right into the water and i've actually heard from numerous older people that they thought that it was a way to create fish beds and i'm sure that the fish probably do use it as a bed but i don't think that that's necessarily a good idea <laughs> so here we are at another catch and here's a bottle now i can't tell if it's a beer bottle or not but the last thing you ever want to do is surmise that a bottle is something and not pick it up because this one's dark colored so it's probably a beer oh nope not a beer that is not a beer that is a coca lula pioneer bottling works and that is a nice turn of the century bottle and that's exactly what i was talking about about the dark baked on color from being in the sun all year so this has been on the sandbar and it was caught up here in this catch for a good while and it's let this stuff kind of cook onto it so i call these sun baked and that right there is something that you could scrub and scrub and scrub and it will not come off <laughs> that's something that we would have to tumble and thankfully that one doesn't have any chips or cracks so that is a very good tumble candidate so not bad two good soda bottles so far one of the other questions that i do receive probably every other week anyways is are you worried about alligators slash snakes thankfully in the northern half of alabama alligators are pretty rare they are here it's just not something that we see readily now if you were in south alabama or florida i'd say yes or even louisiana obviously you're going to have a whole lot of issues with alligators usually they'll leave you alone as far as snakes we see a ton of snakes if you've been on the channel you know that i like to film them and those snakes usually go the opposite direction of you while you're in the water now the only aggressive snakes that i really worry about are water moccasins and water moccasins here in the state some people will argue with you and say that they're not aggressive but i've actually been chased by one I know that probably some of y'all that are watching have too. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you've ever been chased by a water moccasin. They will, they, they are a territorial snake. So they will come after you, especially if you're close to where their territory is. So here we are at another catch point. And one of the things, if you're new to this hobby, you need to keep in mind too, is you're not really looking for the color of a bottle as much as you're looking for the shape. Now, obviously everything kind of looks round, but you're looking for that round shape it's the right length and that's going to be how you find a ton of bottles because they'll be buried and you won't be able to see the neck or you know very much of it but you'll see the round shape and you'll have an idea of the size of what you're looking for so you'll pick up a whole lot of sticks trust me but that assures that you don't miss any bottles very rarely do you see the color of a bottle unless it's early in the year say march or april right after all of the winter rains have left because then it has washed all the bottles that were buried for many many years up to the surface and they don't have the amount of buildup of mud and crud and dirt like they do later on in the year like right now in october so sadly after bottles sit in the sun for a very long time in shallow water they usually turn a darker color and they become much harder to clean one other thing to notate and it's not always doable but if you can Try to go out while the sun's out. Today it's a little bit cloudy. You'd be surprised how much the sun really, really helps while you're trying to peer through the water. 
Also, polarized glasses help. The kind that fishermen use, the polarized glasses will actually let you peer through the water better than just a regular, just without glasses. So I always keep my glasses with me. I've just got a cheap pair from Walmart. And I flip them on and off throughout the day, depending on whether the sun's out, to help me look through the water and see what may be just below the surface that other people have missed. There again, bottles, bottle hunting's a lot like searching for gold. You gotta look in those areas that have the catches, just like this one, and I see a bottle right now. If you're familiar with gold mining, they have something called riffles in their setup for their wash plants. And as the gold goes, it sinks and it gets caught, and then it gets caught in something called miner's moss. Well, in a creek with a bottle, like that one right there, I don't know if y'all can see it, it came rolling out of this pocket over here during the last big rain. It hits these bricks and it's stuck. So let's see what we got. It's complete and it is older. That is a nice Cherokola. A nice sun-baked one at that. Let's see where it's from. Columbus, Georgia. It's in pretty good shape. Been in there for a while. It's got heavy rust residue. So that tells me this was actually in a shallower pocket for the majority of the year, probably. Before I put it in the backpack, I guess I'll give it a good shake. Still got a long ways to go though, so let's see what else we can find. Just saw this sticking up like that right there and I kicked it out. It's a nice early jug top right there. A lot of people save these to repair jugs with, so that's definitely gonna come out with us. If you can help it, always walk upstream. And I know that's not always doable depending on where you have to park your vehicle. But if you can walk upstream, it'll help you avoid the silt that you stir up as you walk. Today, I'm gonna walk downstream and then turn around and walk back upstream on the other side. That's usually how I do things in a bigger creek. I'll stay to one side and then on the way back out, I'm on the other side, that way I cover the majority of the creek but the center. And then I'll come back another day and walk the center. Just an easy way to divide it up and make sure that you don't miss anything. It's kind of my way of gridding a creek or a river. Well guys, that wasn't a bad trip. Got that nice Coca-Lula, nice Cherokola, and the 1915 straight side Coke. I'll call that a good day anytime you can save 300 plus year old bottles, without a doubt. If y'all enjoyed this how-to video, let me know below and I'll do more like it. Also, if you have any tips or tricks you'd like to share, be sure you leave them in the comment section so that you can help others out. We'll catch you guys in the next adventure.